taking good care of your mental health is taking good care of the whole world. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we learn about how life in the modern world is affecting your mental health. Enjoy. The modern world is wonderful in many ways. Dentistry is good. Cars are reliable. We can so easily keep in touch from Mexico with our grandmother in Scotland. But it's also powerfully and tragically geared to causing a high background level of anxiety and widespread low-level depression. There are six particular features of modernity that have this psychologically disturbing effect. Each one has a potential cure, which we will only collectively put into action when we know more about the disease in question. Here are the six. One, meritocracy. Our societies tell us that everyone is free to make it if they have the talent and energy. The downside of this ostensibly liberating and beautiful idea is that any perceived lack of success is taken to be not, as in the past, an accident or misfortune, but as a sure sign of a lack of talent or laziness. If those at the top deserve all their success, then those at the bottom must surely deserve all their failure. A society that thinks of itself as meritocratic turns poverty from a problem to evidence of damnation, and those who have failed from unfortunates to losers. The cure is a strong, culturally endorsed belief in two big ideas. Luck, which says success doesn't just depend on talent and effort, and tragedy, which says good, decent people can fail and deserve compassion rather than contempt. 2. Individualism An individualistic society preaches that the individual and their achievements are everything and that everyone is capable of a special destiny. It's not the community that matters, the group is for no hopers. To be ordinary is regarded as a curse. The result is that the very thing that most of us will end up being, statistically speaking, is associated with freakish failure. The cure is a cult of the good, ordinary life and proper appreciation of the pleasures and quiet heroism of the everyday. 3. Secularism Secular societies cease to believe in anything that is bigger than or beyond themselves. Religions used to perform the useful service of keeping our petty ways and status battles in perspective. But now there is nothing to awe or relativize humans whose triumphs and mishaps end up feeling like the be-all and end-all. A cure would involve regularly using sources of transcendence to generate a benign, relativizing perspective on our personal sorrows. Music, the stars at night, the vast spaces of the desert or the ocean would humble us all in consoling ways. 4. Romanticism The philosophy of Romanticism tells us that each of us has one very special person out there who can make us completely happy. Yet, mostly, we have to settle for moderately bearable relationships with someone who is very nice in a few ways and pretty difficult in many others. It feels like a disaster in comparison with our original huge hopes. The cure is to realize that we didn't go wrong. We were just encouraged to believe in a very improbable dream. Instead, we should build up our ambitions around friendship and non-sexual love. 5. The Media The media has immense prestige and a huge place in our lives but it routinely directs our attention to things that scare, worry, panic and enrage us, while denying us agency or any chance for effective personal action. It typically attends to the least admirable sides of human nature, without a balancing exposure to normal good intentions, responsibility and decency. At its worst, it edges us towards mob justice. 
The cure would be news that focused on presenting solutions rather than generating outrage, that was alive to systemic problems rather than gleefully emphasising scapegoats or emblematic monsters, and that would regularly remind us that the news we most need comes from our own lives and direct experiences. 6. Perfectibility Modern societies stress that it is within our remit to be profoundly content, sane and accomplished. As a result, we end up loathing ourselves, feeling weak and sensing that we've wasted our lives. A cure would be a culture that endlessly promotes the idea that perfection is not within our grasp, that being mentally slightly and at points very unwell is an inescapable part of the human condition and that what we need above all are good friends with whom we can sit and honestly discuss our real fears and vulnerabilities. The forces of psychological distress in our world are currently much wealthier and more active than the needed cures. We deserve tender pity for the price we have to pay for being born in modern times. But more hopefully, cures are now open to us, individually and collectively, if only we recognize with sufficient clarity the sources of our true anxieties and sorrows. That does it for today's episode of 7 Good Minutes. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. If you have questions, you can ask those by going to 7goodminutes.com slash askclyde or get me on Twitter at Clyde Lee Dennis. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.